Welcome to another super fast example of C++ programming for Scratch programmers. So if you've been programming in Scratch, doing your own games and that sort of stuff, and you want to see examples in a lower level language that has a lot more capabilities overall, like C++, uh, these are the videos for you. These are intended for my Redlands Conservatory class, but absolutely everybody is welcome to follow along. So in this particular episode, episode two, we're going to cover loops. Loops are one of the most important things in programming, and you can do a heck of a lot of super fun things when you've got loops in your program. Just about every program uses a main loop to get done whatever you'd like to get done. And a loop is simply a section of instructions which will repeat over and over again until a certain condition is satisfied. So you might say, as long as A is less than 13, I want you to keep doing this set of instructions over and over again. And as the value of A changes based on something else in your program, or a count going on, you are incrementing the value, making it larger and larger, uh, it will just keep looping through there. So I'll show you why that's useful. Let's jump over to Scratch where we can really see it very clearly here. So in Scratch, I've actually got four different loops here that I've laid out for you. The first is what we would call in C++ a while loop. So something will happen as long as a certain condition is present. So here in Scratch, we would call that forever. So forever, if A is less than 13, keep going through this loop and doing whatever's here. And each time through the loop, to make this simple to visualize, we have A get larger and larger. So A is incremented by 1 each time through the loop. So if it goes through the loop 13 times, it's going to go ahead and exit the loop because the condition will be satisfied each time A gets larger when we go through the loop. So A is going to equal 1, 2, 3. We can get an example of that. So let's go ahead and we'll fire up this while loop. Watch the number over here where it shows you what A is going to be equal to. And I'll click on it. And we see it very quickly counts up to 13 because it's going to go through the loop until A is no longer less than 13. So that's a while loop. So let's zip over to our C program now. And we will cut and paste our code here. This is a while loop in C. Now we've gone over some of the basics in the previous video, but I'll very, very quickly go over them again as far as laying out this C program. And as you know, all of the uh, C programs can be put on the online compiler so that it's super easy. You don't have to have anything loaded onto your computer. So here's our online compiler. If any of this seems a little too quick, go back and look at video number one, and it'll show you exactly how to use this online compiler. So I've got all the code there, so you can just cut and paste it in. You don't have to type anything. And here we go. Our program is going to start off by including its library of commands. It's going to include the namespace statement. And then here's our main program. And nothing could be simpler. We tell it that a will be an integer, int a equals 1. So it will be an integer that equals 1. And we say the, almost exactly the same thing we saw in Scratch. Well, a is less than 13. As long as it's less than 13, then do what is in between these two brackets. C out is the command that sends uh, things to the screen. So when we say C out value of a, it's going to print value of a. Then it's going to print what a actually is. And then the same as we did in our Scratch program, where we increased or incremented the value by 1. We do that in C by saying a equals a plus 1. Now there's a shorthand for this. Quick reminder, we've said this I think in all the other programs, but you'll notice in C that all of your statements end with that semicolon. And that's extremely important. It's one of the things that will drive you batty if you forget a semicolon in C. So first, to see if our program is going to work, we'll hit Compile. And down here it tells us it compiled OK. And then we hit Execute. And there we go. Each time through the loop, it prints out value of a and then the value of a. So value of a is 1, value of a is 2, 3, all the way up until 12. Because once a has hit 13, it is, or is less than 13, the last number it's going to display will be 12. So that is an example in C and an example in Scratch. Now there are subtle differences in types of loops that you can execute. Uh, a for loop is usually used for counting. So we could, uh, we could use in Scratch uh, a repeat a certain number of times. So we would just say repeat 10 times. And then no matter what, it would go through the loop 10 times. Uh, there is also a do loop in C. And the only difference really in a do loop and a for loop is that when you do a do loop, it checks to see this number at the end of the loop rather than at the beginning. Here it checks at the beginning, and then it goes through and it does the loop. In a do loop, it checks at the ending of a loop. And that way, it'll always go through the loop at least one time. So each of these will work. I'll go ahead and I've got this up here to reset uh, A to 0. And let's go ahead and we'll stop. It's trying to execute the old program. And as you can see, we repeat until A is greater than 11. So that should have given us 12. What happened here? Oh, 
<laughs> we started with a uh, incrementing by one there. So 11 should have been, uh, what did I do wrong here? Hey, it's always fun with programming, right? To find that, that you had something go a little wacky on you. Let's click it again. There we go, and it went to 12. I have no idea why I went to 13 before. Perhaps you've seen a mysterious and bizarre glitch in Scratch. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and we'll stop it. Uh, and then we have a forever loop, which just means whatever's in the loop, you just want to continuously do it forever. In Scratch, this is particularly handy because since you can have multiple program segments running at the same time, it's cool to have a condition that you can always just check forever. So if I hit this, it ought to go a little crazy, right? Because it's just going to go forever. That number is just going to keep counting and counting and counting up uh, until Scratch reads whatever its limit is, which I'm not certain what that might be. So let's stop it. We'll take one more quick look at those C programs, and then I'm going to let you cut and paste them in all you would like. So back to that Redlands page where you're seeing the video, which is appearing right here in the box. I've got all the cut and paste examples of the code below for you. And we have a simple for loop, which you can do in C++. Cut and paste this into the compiler right over here. You've got a simple do loop. And as I said, the for loop checks the condition that you specified at the beginning. And the do loop checks it at the end. So it always goes through at least one time. And I wrote you a quick little note up here to remind you. And then here's a great example of a forever loop. Anything you put in between these two brackets will be done forever. So you can get some really big, really crazy numbers. A funny thing that I noticed is this is a really good way to lock up a lot of computers. So you might have fun with that because they don't have any way to execute this or exit this loop. Uh, usually there's a break command or a break statement. Not everybody knows that, especially with the online compiler. So you can definitely have some fun with your friends there. So cut and paste each of these examples into that compiler, which you find right here and looks like this. Remember to compile them and then execute them to see the results and jump in there and modify them. Change some numbers, move some things around, and you will have a very, very clear understanding of how the loops work in C. And we're going to move on. Once you've got loops, we can do some cool stuff. So we're going to move up really fast.